Welcome back to the TT Lock-In, fueled by Monster Energy. We're turning our attention to three-wheeled action tonight, as up later, Sundown Cinema presents the amazing documentary, Three-Wheeling. As we get underway with the chairs, and Dave Molyneux blast down Bray Hill. But first, Steve Plater and myself are joined in the first TT Live by the Birchall Brothers, John Holden, Lee Kane, and Tim Reeves. The creme de la creme of three-wheel racing. Welcome to our first ever Lock In TT Live. Over the next week, we've got some amazing guests coming up, all with one thing in common, their love for the TT. Tonight, it's all about three-wheeled action. Now, I don't know about you, but the thought of doing a lap around the TT course scares the living daylights out of me. But one man who jumped at the opportunity was my co-presenter for the week. Take a look at this. Some people say these guys are mad. But these guys are the maddest of the mad. I'm a little bit nervous. I don't normally admit that, but you're going to give me a few pointers. Now, Steve, I remember well from when we raced against each other. You've always been very good at keeping that poker face. Never really knew how you were feeling. Chokes aside, how are you feeling? We're not going to try and break the lap record. These boys did it three times in the first race this week, so... For me, it's just a case of get out there, enjoy the ride, but I'm sure it's going to take me a few miles to chill. Here we go. Moving over to the right side of the machine. This is hard work just to move around from right to left. It's not easy. You know, obviously, I know Tom's watching. I'm going to teach him a few tricks. And, of course, I'm going to help these boys get a sub-19 hopefully for the next race. There we go, mate, back safe and sound. <laughs> oh, brilliant, mate, thanks for that. Do you know what, that boy in the front there, he's crackers, he really is. Absolutely crackers. Steve, that... I mean, I was there when I watched you film that. I was stood in the paddock watching, and you looked nervous, like more nervous than you would be when you know when you're racing a bike. How was it? Do you know what? What a massive insight into how those boys or what they go through, should I say? And so physical. I think probably because I was nervous and I was hanging on real tight. It wore me out. One lap, I was worn out. I was physically broken. There's those guys do three laps without stopping for a pit. But how's about for 2021, me and you, uh, you know, I learn everything that, that Ben can teach me up front. Tom's obviously taught you everything at the back. Do you think we could uh, make a f formidable uh, sidecar team? Yeah, well, in all fairness, you know, I found it quite easy, the passenger in game. I, I need to have a go at driving first before I could make a decision on that. But, you know, I don't believe they go that fast. And how hard can it be? Three wheels instead of two. All right, all right. We'll swap around. You you ride it. I'll sit in the in the passenger seat. But but less of the amateur talk. Let's talk to the guys that actually know what they're doing. Now our first guest should have been joined by his passenger Lee Kane, but unfortunately he's away working. But we have uh, twice on the podium in 2019. It's John Holden. John Holden and Lee Kane. John Holden, another former TT winner. All right. Sideways drifting two wheels. John, John, I think you've been um, at the TT as long as I've been alive. How are you? <laughs> yeah, we're good. Yeah, yeah, missing it, man. You wouldn't believe, but yeah, I've been going there a long while. Started in '88, and I was a young boy. 
Hey, John. How you doing, mate? Yeah. Hi, we got Steve. Hi, all right. It is, yeah. Good, mate. Thank you. Hey, John, listen, yeah. you've, you've, you've finished second place at the TT now with Lee Kane with your passenger. Unfortunately, he can't be with us tonight, but second place for the last three years. You know, is it starting to get up your nose a little bit that you can't quite get back on that top step of the podium? Well, we've got some formidable opposition, haven't we, with Ben and Tom, but uh, we keep trying and uh, I'm sure before long we'll, we'll do it. John, what, what do you think it is that's just missing? What, what do you need? Is it something from the sidecar itself or is it something... No, nah, I don't want to say you're getting long in the tooth because, hey, you're not, you've still got the speed, but... Is it something on, on the mental side that you're missing? What what what, what is it? No, well, last year we went uh, we went to the TT. We brought the lap record last year, but Ben and Tom just went a little bit quicker. Now, in my mind, um, we're slight disadvantage. We're probably carrying thirty kilograms more than Ben and Tom, but um, <laughs> you just got to get over it, you know what I mean, and see what you can do. 30 kilograms more, is that because you've got more money than they have? <laughs> do, you yeah, analyze, the fault, <laughs> do you analyse everything with uh, with Lee, you know, after the racing and go through as much as you possibly can just to try and drag out, I know what the virtuals are like, you know, do you, do you try and analyse everything to drag out as much information and get as much speed as you possibly can? Yeah, well, as, I, as I was saying, we, we have a few things going on. Lee, it's, it's not just as easy for us. Lee lives in the Isle of Man, and uh, hats off to him. He's a, co he's a, a, a worker doing his, his job at these difficult times, so rather than coming on here and playing with us. But uh, yeah, I mean, Ben and Tom, the, the, the brothers, they, they're in sync with each other. They, they work together, they, they build sidecars together all the time. They're really tuned into one another. So that's maybe just something that's not just. Uh, it's easy for us, but, but when we're there, we, we build a great relationship up and, uh, well, just got to try a bit either. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And what's your prediction for 2021 then? Obviously, we, we've got a fair way to wait, but are you as eager as ever? Do you know what? I'm eager, hunger, whatever you want to call it. I I just live, eat and breathe, racing my side cars. I, I can't get enough of it. I still feel that I'm capable of getting on the top step. Um, we have a great package with fantastic sponsors, Silicon Engineering, Barnes Racing, um, and all everybody else that helps me besides them. We, so we've got everything in our corner. We've just got to go and deliver, and I just need to uh, stick my neck out a bit more and go a bit faster. Yeah, any any well, big well, changes? Yeah, big changes Sorry, this year. We, uh, yeah, big changes this year, and we'll, we'll carry it on next year. We've gone uh, Yamaha, and the cams are doing doing that for us. So we've got a good engine package, uh, the same chassis, a few other little developments and that that we go on. Um, I'm probably um, 10 kilograms lighter than I have been in the past, and aim to continue that because I mentioned weight, so that's something I can do about it. But I'm I'm six foot two, so I can't be 60 kilograms, so it's difficult. That's mega. John, we look forward to seeing you at the TT 2021. Next up, we have a multiple world champion and TT winner, Tim Reeves. Tim Reeves and Mark Wilkes. They're pushing hard, looking good on road. Here we've got Tim Rees and Mark Wilkes. <coughs> Tim, I guess I should start with the same question to you. Uh, how are you, mate? Yeah, all good, yeah. Uh, just trying to keep myself busy, you know, and... Uh... Yeah, all good. I've um, I've moved over to Holland. The team's based in Germany now, who I've signed for for the next few years. And uh, we decided that I'd get myself into Europe because it's a it's a bit easier to get around over here. So yeah, we're off testing tomorrow to Austria Slaven for a couple of days. So I've, I just can't wait to get back on my bike. Tim, how do you mate? 
you're a you're All an good. eight times world champion. You're so successful and competitive at that discipline. How is it? What? Why? Why do you seem to have so much bad luck at the TT? I don't know, Steve. Really, you know, in in 2018, I had a really great year, and uh, my speed came came up quite a bit, and um, we virtually at the same sort of time as John, and yeah, I improved massively. But it's just uh, the whole package, really. I've, I've worked a lot harder over the since the end of 2019. I've also swapped to Yamaha's, and uh, we just had some bad luck at the TT. In total, I went home from there at the end of 2019. I only done three laps, and that included the two lap race. So I don't know, Steve. I just need a bit of my luck to sort of fall my way. But, but yeah, I, I try my best, and I've got a good package now. And we just uh, I had a really good Southern Hundred on the on the Yamaha, and we've we've um, yeah, I've got some good engines from a German tuner at the moment, and uh, I'm really happy with the TT package. So I just yeah, just have to wait and see how it goes next year. And, and Tim, as long as you get the lump you need, do you think that you're capable of taking that top step again on the uh, on the podium at the TT? Well, obviously Ben and Tom have raised the, the bar quite high, haven't they? But you know, if you didn't believe you could win, then you wouldn't go. You'd stay at home. So obviously, I believe in myself. Yeah, it's just it's just finding it. All everything has to click into place, and I certainly wouldn't take any unnecessary risks. If if on the day everything feels right, and then I'll, I'll try and push to try and win. And yeah, I believe in myself that I can possibly you do it so we just have to uh, have a go the, like you just said the Bertels have been dominating there really since 2013 time you know and you're obviously ultra competitive and I know you get the raving pump when you can't win how much does it eat away at you all year round in between TTs um it doesn't really. Once once it's over and I've I've gone, you know, we leave the island. It's you have to get back on with the normal job, which is trying to win the world championship. So it, you soon forget about that year. But yeah, obviously, you know, I've, it's something that's on the top of my list. Yeah, I want I want to win another TT. There's no doubt about that. And um, you know, flipping out. If it was easy, everyone would be doing it, wouldn't they? It's um, and you know, you've got, you've got to give credit where credit's due. Ben and Tom are, are on the ball at the moment, and. You know, it's down to me and John and, and a few of the other boys, the founders boys, etc., to, to, to try and close that gap and, and give them give them a challenge. So, yeah, all you can do is we just try and prepare a bit better. And like John said, the biggest disadvantage we've got, I'm sure, is what is the weight situation. It sounds like we're flying on about it all the time, but unfortunately, it's something we can't get round. We're just we're all on it. We're all on similar equipment. Our bikes are all well prepared. They're all fast. But when it comes down to your actual body weight, there's nothing you can do about it. I can't cut my leg off. I don't know. <laughs> you probably could somewhere in Europe. Anyway, <laughs> let's get on to the next VT. And you know where we're going with this one. A formidable force. In fact, they're probably just down the road. I, I can probably see them from where I live right now. Roll VT. Are we about to witness TT history? So fast. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Tuck in so low behind the bodywork. It's a thinker's one, don't they? Oh, look at them kicking the dust up. So Ben and Tom Birchall then. Hey Ben. Now, How you've won every TT you've finished since 2013. You know, obviously it's a year off this year for for obvious reasons. Does it feel a little bit easier to rest on those laurels until 21 and just sit back and enjoy? No, not at all. <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, well, you know, hello to everyone. It's nice to see them guys. We should be uh, staring at each other across the paddock in the middle of Isle of Man. But, you know, I wish we was all there. But, yeah, to think about resting on your laurels is is such a fearful thing for me. It's uh, we've had a great run out, and, and there's no way we can deny it. We've got great help, great people behind us, and I know what I've got on the side of me, and I know what we've got under us. And it, you know, it's a it's a great package. And um, but to say that you could rest on your laurels is certainly a fearful thing for me. It's uh, I'm more frightened of of, uh, of not being able to do it than than anything else. And Tom, when I was when I was a lad, my dream was to be 
a sidecar passenger, not necessarily at the TT, but watching you boys, it, it absolutely terrifies me. The most successful sidecar passenger. What does it take to become that? Apart from holding on for grim death. I mean, I, I've got Steve Plater to, to thank for most of my success, if I'm honest. You know, behind the scenes, he's been working with us for years. But, and that's a very old rubbish. <laughs> <laughs> I've, uh, I've got a great, great uh, ambition to, you know, to do something pretty special. And, and thankfully, that's, that's come true. Um, I've also got a massive influence in my brother, you know. He drives me on, pushes me forward, and we've got some great people around us that, that also keep us just pushing on, you know, going back to what we are just saying about resting on the laurels, all well, that just doesn't happen in this team. There's always little goals to chip out, but, you know, if if he ever falters and, and loses a bit of drive, I'll pick him up and vice versa. So there's no way, you know, thinking about slowing down or, or thinking about anything else yet. You know, we just want to keep ticking the boxes and, and trying to win races. Now, what, what's the, what's your main target? You know, you're so successful, you know, you've got all the lap records, sorry, you've got the outright lap record and of course the, the race record, but if you double your amount of TTs, you're still not quite up there with Molly. Is that what you're aiming for, to beat his record? Uh, no, no, I'm not. <laughs> I don't. I don't really go for that. I just at the minute the aim is to to keep being successful and you know keep keep doing our best at at that place and just seeing what it brings. And it's it's uh, it's not an easy thing, is it? You know, it's a it's an incredible challenge. And I have so much respect for everyone that's there. And I know these two lads that's on the screen with us. They they they're on it and they're chipping away at it and they want it as much as what we do. So no, I don't. I ain't got. An ambition to be so many number of wins or so many, not even you know any any particular speed on that record. It's just to be the best that we can be, and I think that is that is really our key to success. That it, everything has to be the best for that that two weeks, and we've built that up. And the people that surround us, uh, uh, you know, know that's where we are. And we, you know, a lot we've had a good school, and a lot of it come from when we when we first got the ride with Claffy and. You know, his logo is for winners only and he does not accept anything less. And a lot of that rubbed off and we've carried a lot of that on in, in our in, in our own efforts uh, as, we, as we stepped into it and run the team ourselves. Tom, we're uh, we're getting a lot of comments about this um, this moustache that you seem to be sporting at the minute. Um, is, 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 is that, that a choice? <laughs> or have you been forced into it? Well, uh, sidecar business is a bit steady at the minute, so uh, I've had to go into other areas of uh, employment, let's say. So, uh, you know, I've come to fix your sink, that kind of thing. You know, I won't say anymore, it's a family show, but you get the idea. What? Stink. In fact, I've got another webcam to do in about half an hour. Can we worry this all? <laughs> Oh dear, John, you, you, John, you come from the, uh, you're you're a sidecar family, really. How's the missus getting on? Oh well, she's doing good. She's here, look. She's joining us. Evening, everybody. Hey, there you are. Yeah, she's she's doing good. Two years on now, Steve. Uh, we had the anniversary of her crash two years ago, and uh, she's done amazing, raised loads of money for charity and that, and now she's got into into running and she's fixed her own uh, goals to do, I think, 500 miles in five months or something, I don't know. She's crackers. She was on the bike and she is now, do you know what I mean? So, uh, yeah, she's, uh, she's as keen as ever, supports me like you wouldn't believe. Uh, she puts up with my bad moods at the moment because we're not at the Alamon and yeah, no, she's good. It's good. Great to have her with me. So, she needs so Tim, obviously... Sink fixing. <laughs> you are. Does she need a sink oh, fixing, oh. John? Uh, I'll ask her. How's your sink fixing? Ben, that's, that's, think, a yeah. that's, that's a different show. That's a different show. Yes, can't be sure. All right, yeah, okay. No. <laughs> 
Hey, right. oh. we've, we've got uh, a drain, drain buster or something. I think that helps with it. Then. That's what that's what they call Tom, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> That's enough. That's enough. Uh, I think we need to we need to move on and TT matches we need to go to. Exactly. Let's talk about TT now. Tim, you mentioned you'd you'd actually move to Holland. Do you think that's gonna gonna benefit you in the long run as well? Well, obviously, I, it's easy to move about over here. So I've been over here a month now, and uh, the response has been excellent. He's um, he stood by a contract and uh, he's carried on paying me. So I thought, I, you know, I could should get over and do a bit of work for the team really at the base. And then, yeah, we've we've hired a track now and we're going to get to ride tomorrow and Monday, uh, Tuesday. So, yeah, it's good. It's um, in Europe, they're they're quite a bit in front of England, and uh, it's quite worrying when you when now I'm out of the UK and I'm over here. It's um, you, you realise how sort of what sort of state our country's in at the minute. It's it's really not so good and. Uh, yeah, they seem to have got a much better grip of it in Europe, so it's better for me because I can get to ride my bike. Ben, yeah, just tell me what you know. Obviously, I've sat behind you around the TT course, but what's your favourite part of the course? Is it the fast up or the tight and nagery bits? Yeah, my favourite bit is. Um... Bottom of the Gara to Douglas Road Corner. Absolutely love that section. And uh, I, I don't know why it probably because we always used to go uh, camping there when we were kids and we'd sort of I'd pedal it on my push bike into Kurt Michael to go to the shop and I'd pedal it on my push bike to Dave Mullin who was garaging Kurt Michael to help him for for a year and it's just that bit, you know, we was always in and around that area and so familiar to me. And, I, you know, I really, really enjoy it. Proper puts, uh, well, yeah, makes your pants uh, fit you when you when you get it right through there. So no, I love that bit. Yeah, really, really do. Wait, you you boys wear pants? <laughs> yeah, tight ones. <laughs> anyway, John, what, what I want to know is, how have you seen the, the TT course change? Obviously, like I say, you've been there for years and years and years. Have you seen uh, a lot of the changes take place? And have you been able to adapt to those, even though slightly small changes, have you been able to adapt to them and, and maintain that speed? I guess you have, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's um, just like quite okay. then, brandish. Hello? Yeah, Corrie Benz and Brandish and various other places. It's just changes all the time but it's uh it's can you remember that far back to... john i can i you know i i was having a checkup i went there in 88 for a start but i used to go with mum and dad and uh <coughs> we used to stay at a place called house Stray holiday camp and uh no, I I think it was out. no no we were, were after that <laughs> But uh, you young lads, you just want to watch out, you know what I mean? <laughs> There's plenty of knowledge here. Um, yeah, so it, it's changed massively and changed in lots of ways, and I, I think for the better, but uh, some things aren't just as good. I used to enjoy the morning practice, coming in for your cup of tea and your cake and things like that, but it's uh, it, has, it has changed. I think for the better, I think it's better for the general public, and... Uh, yeah, it's uh, more accessible for everybody. And, yeah, I think it's good. Now, Tim, last question from me. Do you think those two boys there from Mansfield, do you think they're unbeatable? Around the team? No, I thought, no, they're on the ball, aren't they? But if I, if I thought they were unbeatable, I, you'd, you'd might as well retire, haven't you? You've got to have something to chase. And, you know, we have uh, we have great competition in, on the short circuits. And, yeah. I just hope we could, you know, in the future we can have a close race on the roads. And uh, yeah, if I if I didn't believe that I stood a chance of taking a race to them, then I, I would just hang my leathers up and retire. Brilliant. Well, <clears throat> gentlemen, I look forward to seeing you in the real world, uh, TT 2021. Thank you so much for joining us for the first TT Lock In Live. Tomorrow, pretty exciting. Tomorrow we're going to be joined all the way from Australia by Cameron Donald. Not only that, all the way from Batley is going to be Clive Paget. <laughs>
Have a great new evening, and we'll see you all tomorrow for some more TT Locking Live. Coming up next, that great doc, Three Wheeling. Cheers. Enjoy. Three wheeling around the world. Here we are, the grandstand, we're all ready to go. The entertainment and the love you get from this sport. Hello, three wheelers, live with three wheeling. We have an bed for the program. They are oh, so, so focused on this sidecar race, and I'm in awe of them. Oh, we're about to witness TT history being made again. If you're really, really keen and you want to get involved in uh, the promotion of our great sport, then become an ambassador. Take photos and post them on our fan page. We have such a great sport, and it's all the personalities and all the friendships that we have and all the families that are involved. here should we nip up the cap of the tail and have one drink or a coffee or something yeah, yeah. yeah. you're not in massive rush to get back are you no i just i just said uh, what time is it well, i said to him i'll, I'll yeah. be back drink half three yeah i've got an hour that's right you told me you'd be back half four are we ready yeah okay we're here at the grandstand with retired tt ace and now team manager claffy who has a very important announcement to make ahead of this year's tt Claffy, over to you. Um, yeah, I have to announce, uh, Honda will be backing us for the TT 2016, which is a big achievement for me. I'm, I'm very happy what I can tell you now. It's, uh, we teamed up with uh, 17 TT winner uh, Dave Molyneux, and to me, it sounds like a dream team. And you'll be managing him alongside Andy this year? Uh, yes, I will. Uh, I'm, I'm responsible for uh, more like the sponsor side and, uh, and Andy will, will in charge with Molly himself. He is a legend. 17 TT wins on the mountain circuit. 17 wins to his credit so far. They all look up to Molly, they set the standard. Dave Molyneux. The lap record's yours in the back, sir. Well done. Time sidecar legend Dave Molyneux. And our winners, Dave Molyneux. 700 victories, lap records. <laughs> Done really well in World Championship events in the, around Europe, in the world stage. He's, he's achieved, he's, he's a living legend. He's uh, focused, dedicated, a brilliant engineer. Is Dave in the garage 24 7 at the moment, or is he having any time out at all? He never has time out. He's flat out all the time. 
because he, he's a very skilled man. He, he builds his own chassis. Fiberglass. Fairing. The only thing he doesn't do is actually tune the engine. And that's where Klaus has come in with these highly tuned engines. The Honda engines, especially the CBR600s, are the best for the Saika here at TT, without a doubt. Dan, very talented motorcyclist, Manx Grand Prix winner uh, on a solo bike. Saika. Passenger to me, he's the best. And he's not just a good passenger, he's good to help with the setup. If he comes in, he can tell Dave we need to take a click off there, we need to alter the wheel. You know, it's, he, he's very clued up. We know how to handle Dan. We get the best out of him. So, like I said, on paper, it should be a dream team. He's not a PR man. It's an experienced sport more so, and you don't see me jogging down the road or pumping iron in the gym or any crap like that. He doesn't like the limelight. People portray him to be difficult to work with. I know to keep away from him. He likes to do it his way. And let's face it, he's won 17 TT, so something's worked. It's a big team. I hope Dave can work in that environment. Sometimes two bosses don't work well together. Arguably, in every situation engine, of the line, we just all over the place. Fit in a team. Team. But if we can all like do our bit, hopefully it'll work. On paper, it should. Radio Sport, brought to you by Ellen Vanin Fuels. Well, it's just two weeks to go until TT 2016, and there's drama already as sidecar king Dave Molyneux has parted ways with Claffy. Just down to a difference of opinion of, uh, you know, engine setup. As it sits, I've built and designed my new bike around the Honda engine, which is something I kind of half regret, but I'm, I'm kind of in too deep to make a choice of any other engine. He's had his way for many years and been really successful at it, and I've had my way for many years and been successful at it, and we just came to a difference of opinion. It was as simple as that. Maybe it wasn't such a good thing teaming up, but at the time we thought it was a great idea, both of us, and as time's gone on, I think for it to have gone on wouldn't have been particularly successful. This place comes alive, the Isle of Man comes alive. It's an event that's really well put together, well prepared. For all the people who come in and watch the races, they get a bit sucked in this atmosphere, and it's like you get addicted to that. They're around about 130 brake horsepower, these machines. They run the same engines as the Super Sport, 600 cc's, and they'll be using something like 40 litres of fuel over this three lap race. Yeah, these sidecar outfits, they use the engines and work the engines a lot harder than the solos. They're carrying two people, a lot more weight, and they get a lot more stick because they've got less suspension. Once you sample what it's all about, it's, it's, it's really addictive with bike shit. But what comes here as well is the danger. Sidecar is one of the most extraordinary, fast, dangerous sport. You're seven centimeter above the, the ground. Your head is 70 centimeter above. And you're flying like head in front, 150 miles per hour on public roads. Safety-wise, they couldn't do any more than they are. You know, it's, it's a public road at the end of the day. The feeling's unbelievable you get from being here. We'll hand back down to the grandstand, and uh, the sidecar's just about to get away, Chris. 
Thanks, Tim. And indeed, we are about to begin practice sessions for the most exhilarating race in the world. For the next two weeks, these perfectly normal towns, streets, villages and country roads will close to become one of the most dangerous racetracks in the world. 37 and three quarter miles of intense focus, skill and sheer bravery, dodging lampposts, stone walls and people's garden fences and pretty much any other obstacle you can think of too. And with that, it's time to get underway with sidecar practice, a whole week where the riders can familiarize themselves with the course and iron out any problems with their machine. So without further ado, number one living legend, Dave Molyneux with 17 TT wins under his belt. Dan Saylor's in the chair. Let's begin sidecar TT 2016. Number four is after them, Tim Reeves, Pat Ferrance in the chair. First three sidecars away at the top of Bray Hill already. Yeah. yeah, but all the emotion for motorbike racing is the smell yeah. and the noise. Yeah. That's what he is. And that's what we want. I have a responsibility uh, uh, about sponsors, and um, I have to be in, in this TT. Here comes your first answer, that's all right. In my mind, popped up Tim Reeves. I think he's quite a natural racer. Yeah? Yeah, fucking yeah. hell, it's fast. He proved it with his uh, titles in the World Championship. Yeah. A few bits and bobs here and there. Cut the races. What have we won? I've won five World Championships, two World Cups, five British Championships, three Southern Under Championships, a TT. I had six podiums at the TT. So, yeah, I've not had a bad run, really. It's been all right. Oh, stiffen it up. It needs stiffening up. It's soft, Stiffen it up. soft on the front. It's like that. Wow. The thing with the passenger is you need to trust him, you know? Tim trusts Patrick, and Patrick trusts Tim, which is the most important thing around the TT plus. I just go where Tim goes. <laughs> yeah, I love it. He won TTs before, which is good. I don't ride it. I ain't got a license. Never ridden a bike on the road. It's too dangerous, isn't it? You've got things coming the other way. At least when you're racing, they're all going the same direction. Yeah. We've been mates for a long time, haven't we? You know, if you've got a good bond with someone, you're going to work better. Yeah, we've got a good, real good friendship off the bike. We have done ever since we, before we rode together in the World Championships, ever since we first met. I offered Tim, I've got the bear of Molly and Dan, but we hadn't tried it on the bike. He says, ah, oh, it's, I can't, it's too tight on the arms, it's too tight on their legs, but that's only a small problem. It was only 80 when we were going around. It's happened because we stopped, didn't it? Yeah, but you need to, uh, it's, it's, you know, here, yeah. around here, it's leaking because right. it was blowing out here. No, I, I think it's alerting. Where, where, you know, I said seal it, didn't I? Yeah. Things are locked on. Put some lock wire around that pipe. Yeah. Yeah, no, but I don't think it's around the pipe. You've got a team within a team, haven't you? Because you've got the team that works together on there, and then you need the team of backers around you. One, one the, for the financial help and two, the people that are looking after it, making sure that it's not going to fall to ditch really. Your bike's got to be meticulously prepared, otherwise it bites. You get as much out of that as what you put into it. If you look after it, it looks after you. And this year, it's, we've got a good team around us. Klaus has brought that extra bit to the, to the team. And um, I don't think there's ever a dull moment, is there? Yeah, you've got to make fun of it, otherwise it becomes a chore and it's just, it's no fun because, you know, there's not enough money in the sport to pay, pay people. We haven't got a fully paid team. You know, and all these lads that are helping us, you know, they're there because they want to be there. We've got a mega, mega team this year. It's been, been real good fun so far. I thought you were. Why is he got bloody Kawasaki on his ladder? He just changed it oh, right. from the Honda. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Because it's too tight. You stuck in the tire, but I couldn't see it. Yeah. <laughs> it's like Dad's army, isn't it? Yeah. Tim Reeves and Pat France going out. They did on their first lap, they did 106.52. So maybe just a couple of adjustments made and headed back out. You know, probably there was some air in the system from the beginning. Mm. It's more likely we like had, that. We had a right mission of a job bleeding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right yeah. Right yeah. Right on the front end. Yeah, yeah. Can't, can't be here. It takes another minimum 10 minutes. Well, you want to win, don't you? I still want to win. I mean, I know we've won one, but one's not enough. Oh, five or six or seven, maybe. We'll have to see. Yeah, it's true. 
good. Let's go down. Yeah. Going to the awning. So your leaders on the road in the outfits are John Holden, Andy Winkle, Ian Bell, Carbell, and Ben and Tom Boots are all there. Ooh, no Dave Mullen. Yeah, 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 no, yeah, no Dave there, but never mind. He, well, he was first on the road, so he should yeah, exactly. be first through. Tim Reeves and Pat France have gone out after making no changes at 107.02 miles an hour. It feels fast, but it's going, yeah. isn't it? Very fast. Is it? Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> it's fast enough. Yeah, it's got a lot of sting in it. Mm. And it was, well, well we, the suspension change was made much better. Much better. First one we came in, when you go through, uh, well, everywhere, bounce off the bump stops. Mm. You're coming through the left, it's like, Whoa. Yeah. yeah I'm, I don't want to be funny, but no, no, no. I. I took a picture of your bike this afternoon, sent it to Gerhard. In five minutes, he came back and said, I don't, I don't think that that water system works like that. It will be hard to de bleed. Yeah, my gosh. Yeah. Klaus, it needs a bleed in there. Yeah. In there, it needs, to, it needs a bleed on it. Definitely. Because it can trap air in there, can't it? Maybe I should put maybe I should put a piece in here with a, a piece of value with a tube and another and a cap and block yeah. it off. Yeah. Weld that up. Yeah. Get money to weld a plate yeah. on that and fill it from here. Yeah, definitely. And, and yeah, and then if you have room here, yeah. I would. And I, the level needs to be, you know, yeah. both the right, the head. And that's what you have to do. Those levels, you know, with the hump, you can feel less wind. When I put these on, these go. Yeah. 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 But it's too tight for you. Only here, yeah. Patrick spoke to a lady. She's going to take them tomorrow. She, she can cut them. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. There's something in here that I can. Yeah. That needs to leave it on that. No, it doesn't. I'm going to sit the cast. I'm going to weld that up. Put a plate on there and weld that up. Tube out there. There's a tube on it and leave the header. Yeah, header up there. Put it on. You know what? That's a shizer. What is shizer? That's a shizer, That's yeah. That's a grosser shizer. Yeah, shizer. You're right. Man, does she super? <laughs> yeah, that, that, that's the, that's, that, you know, the, that words, I can speak in any, any language because that's the first you learn. And that is it from us here this evening. Stand by, Tim Blue will be here very shortly with the practice report. I'll be back on there for the chat show. Oh, Dave Molyneux has retired, uh, well, uh, Ramsey Hairpin have just been told in the headphones. Uh, stopped at Ramsey Hairpin, retired there. So, yeah, no other details at the moment. We'll see you tomorrow night. Take care, bye-bye. Yeah, not going to get near that, I wouldn't have thought tonight, but I tell you what, you, like, well, 115, I reckon. Yeah, so do I. And if not, do you know what? I think Molly's really up for it. Because he's had a few gremlins and a few problems, I think, you know, Molly thinks a little bit like uh, Michael Dunlop. I think he's going to want to stamp his authority. And uh, as long as he has no more gremlins, no more problems, I think he will be pushing hard tonight. Uh, we had an overheating problem, and when he got to Ramsey, the top of the radiator hadn't quite sealed and it threw water out on Dan and obviously he had to stop because it, a brand new engine that would have just blown it sky high so that, that was the problem on Monday night. <laughs> Alright boys? Thank you. No problem. You're right, kids? Thank you. No problem. Hi. Sorry, I'm going to lock you out now. It's all right. The, the Grand Prix bike is by far better, yeah. The 1000cc, it's an absolute rocket. It's like sitting on top of a rocket. It's like being on top of a rocket, but you can't ride them here, unfortunately. The, the, the best place to ride is here. This is, you know, circuit-wise, unfortunately, you're limited to, to what bike you can ride here, so we have to ride the little bike. If it wasn't for the TT, I would never have a little bike. The first lap around the TT circuit was my first lap on an F2 chassis with a 600cc engine, and I went out. Klaus Klaffenbach, Sidecar World Champion. And like 
halfway round, I thought, oh, that's not for me. Shaking, you know, like jumping around, out of control, never driven a bike like that. I thought, nah, that's not for me. So that was after like 15 miles, you know? And when we came back to the start finish, I thought, no, we are the world champions. We can't stop now. We need to prove it, you know? So carried on. Coming through Ramsey, here's Klaus Klaffenbox on his first attempt at the Isle of Man. And this is Kenny Howells with Nigel Cole behind him, and both of them ahead of Claffy on the road. So they've both made up quite a big parcel of time on the world champion. I mean, after the first practice, we were probably five minutes back to the top guys, like Molly was at the time. He still, he, he was already the top guy. It was about five, five minutes per lap, slowly ahead of him. But I liked it, you know. Here's Klaffenbach coming towards us. When I won the TT in 2010, the first time, we weren't uh, the quickest in practice. Molly was quicker than us. But we won both races in 2010. And because we tried so hard from the first year, 2004, up to 2010, and when you cross the line and you know you're the winner. Makes you know, you know, you feel like you unbeatable. It's it's such a great feeling, you know, and this feeling I never got before. <laughs> Even when I won the world championship, it was a great feeling. But when you won the TT, you know, with all what, what I experienced up to that, with all the people died, you know, I've seen people dying in front of me and all the trouble we had with the, with the technique. And when, when I actually won it, it, it was like, you unbeatable. You know, you, you someone, you, you cannot die anymore, you know? That's that that was, what was the feeling when you cross the line, and um, I promised my family uh, I want to be on the podium once. But after 2010, I said I need to come back. I need to prove it. You know. <laughs> One again, and uh, but after that, I just said it's finished now. And uh, I must say, because after that, I had my own team. Even I, I was really scared when they are on the track, you know, because I know how dangerous it is. And then, by then, I understand my 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 family, you know, what they going through through a TT. But when you're doing it, you know, you feel so self-confident, you know, nothing can happen to me. But when you step behind, you see what they're going through, I can tell you, is hell, you know. My mom back in Austria watching it on the internet and you don't get the information immediately what's happened. You just see they're not going through that time point and you don't know what's happened. So it takes probably 10, 15 minutes until it comes out, he stopped because of a technical issue. But then 10 minutes, that must be a hell, you know? Well done, another wind, getting used to this. Yeah, yeah it feels good. Yeah, hey, it feels good, yeah, now it's perfect. <laughs> Molly, he was acting like a one-man show. He was not listening to me. I was trying hard for him to find a sponsor, to find like publicity, which in the future will, 
would give him more sponsors, but it wasn't working like that. In the deal we agreed, he had to use the Honda range engines because I've, I've got a close relation to Honda. And uh, so he went out on the, on the Honda range and we, I supplied him and he just said, that's not good enough. Can't win. I can't win with this. It's not good enough. And we need to, to change all this. And uh, he said, from now on, I'm in charge. So I said, that will not work. I mean, I'm not, I'm not putting money on in, in, it, in the team and have nothing to say. He says, no, will not work like that. Okay, I said, then we need to split up. And that was just two weeks before TT. Yeah, it's only a very small close-knit team, but that's the way we like it, the way we work. Dave doesn't like being here, you know, in the middle of it all. He just likes to do his own little thing, and it works for him, it works for us. It's been a big project over the winter. It's a different engine, it's a different chassis, it's a different aerodynamics, different electrics are different. It's, it's been intense. He knows that that machine is capable of winning with, and with him and Dan on it, and it's just the fine tuning. And this is what practice is, is all about. And I think we get these little um, problems ironed out this week. You know, we're going to have a great chance on Saturday for a good result. I think the man to watch tonight will be Molly. Uh, I really do. I, uh, I think he'll, he'll be a man on a mission, I'm sure. <laughs> Ready to go, problems to him last night. He sat in the chair and leave you me for me. Don't go and talk to him when he sat in there. <laughs> Looking at 112.05, 20 minutes 12.158 for this lap time. Also, we're nearly ready to go here now. Dave Dawn, 96.47, and Arsenal Hawking, number 58. And as we get underway with the chairs, and Dave Molyneux blast down Bray Hill once again, hoping for no problems this evening. Number four, Tim Reeves, Pat Ferrantz away. Doesn't that sound fantastic? He, he likes to make the show, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Responsibility of being a passenger. Um, you've sort of got 50% handling of the bike. Like, you determine how well that bike handles. <laughs> I was never ever on the side, and I wouldn't go on the side. Um, and especially going around here with 140, 150 miles per hour, just hanging on on two handles, uh, it is a bit nuts. And number 26, well, keeping that wheel down for Dave Molyneux last year was Ben Vins. 26, a new driver this year, though, in Dwight Beer. Passengers have fun and drivers just drive. If you're not a good passenger, you're not going to get good results um, on the bike. So I determine how much the tail wheel floats through lefts, how much front end grip Tim gets, how much rear end grips he gets, and it, it changes from corner to corner. 
from on every circuit, um, especially around here. Uh, just as simple as looking up out of the bubble, you're going to knock three, four hundred revs off straight away. It shows up on the data, so you can't even get away with it. Um, Things are happening that quick, you haven't got time to be scared. And even a few close moments where you go, oh, Jesus Christ. But, you know, you, you're already thinking about what you're going to do next, so that's completely gone out of your head. It, it's a massive team effort. I don't think there's any other sport where there's two people that have got so much responsibility, um, where you've got each other's lives in, in your own hands. We've just heard that Tim Reeves and Patrick Ferrance, who are number four, are a retirement at Laurel Bank. So they're a retirement there, but the passenger is receiving medical attention, and we do hope it's nothing too serious. And Molly and Sale are there at Ramsey now. Dave's dropped about uh, six seconds there, six, nearly seven seconds, hasn't he? So he's dropped quite a lot of time, unfortunately, there for Dave. So. Maybe a problem, don't know, you never know. It'd be the gear and always run wide somewhere. Yeah. We'd better be ready in case he pulls in here, you know. You know, Dave's an extremely serious competitor and he's going to want to uh, make sure that uh, he performs as best he can. Uh, bear in mind, that is Dave's first lap as well. Uh, obviously, he didn't get the lap in the other nights. Do you want to go down and see if you can have a word? Yeah, I'll see, word see if he'll talk to me. See what he's doing. I'll, I'll just get the times on here, Palmy. You just shout, Chris, if you got anything down yeah, there, Yeah, I'll mate? just... I'll, he's just talking uh, to Dan at the minute. He's just told us the temperature was going to 113, 95. I'm just floating around here. Only going on these trees and I'm going to have to throttle to one up. Going down the street. Straight down 95. Hmm. Dave. Dave, everything all right, mate? 112.48. Happy enough? Not really. Not really. <laughs> it's not really happy, but uh, the lap time's still pretty good. So, uh, obviously got a few little bits and pieces to sort out. And... Uh, all right, we'll let him crack Yeah, we'll just let him... Uh, Five and you were three seconds ahead of him. Ramsey, you were six seconds. Yeah, we took a shot. Ready to go? Yes, go ahead. Sorry, mate. It, it looks like Molly's uh, pushing his outfit away, so I think that's it for the night for him. So, uh, obviously, uh, a couple of bits to sort out for him, I think. What a shame for Dave Molyneux then, who again will not be setting a qualifying time tonight. Not to worry though, this is what practice is all about. And I bet you he's glad to find out all the problems with his bike this week than during the race. So Dave Molyneux out after one lap and Tim Reeves also that retirement at Laurel Bank. Um, honestly, I was pissed off because it had wasted the night. You know, straight away I was like, I didn't, I didn't know what had happened, you see. I didn't feel anything, I didn't... It just, um, we have a bit of a... Amongst ourselves, you know, there's, there's some stony surfaces through that, through that particular section, the walls that jut out in the road. And I tipped into the to Laurel Bank, this is second gear left. Cloud is back on the, on the side of the flint wall. I mean, to be fair to him, it was a fair knock, I mean, it, He's, um, it winded him. He, he banged me in the back straight away, and I thought something could fell off the bike, so I pulled straight in. But yeah, he was. Uh, it winded him, and he was laid about on the floor and couldn't get up. And, but luckily, he was all right. But yeah, for a start, I was a bit fed up because it had sort of ruined their night. Really, it was you know, it was Tuesday night, and we wanted to start to get going, and it sort of yeah, it cut us short really. And we obviously we lost the whole of that practice, so it doesn't matter. I'm sure we'll we'll be all right. The general rule is don't get out beyond the bodywork. Um, and I broke that rule, got out a little bit too far and just clipped the banking. And that was the end of the practice um, that night for us. It was on the first lap, so it's a bit, bit disappointing, but it knocked the wind clean out of me. And you go in that fast and it's by the time you think, oh, I've peeled in a little bit earlier than what we'd normally, it's, you're in the wall. You don't have time to react or adjust yourself. 
it's just you know it's going to happen but it's like a split second you've got no time to react you're in the wall i've been in physio um for the rest of the time now i mean i woke up on wednesday morning thinking that there was no way i was going to be riding that night um i was i was pretty beaten up um, but i spent all day with scott physiotherapy in the paddock and they squared me up and um yeah it's generally not too bad now when i'm on the bike but off the bike i, I can't lift anything at the minute Dave Molyneux, a million percent dedication. You know, there's nothing else in his life that get in the way of his racing. He's 110%, well, not 110%, he's a million percent committed. Everything, it's, it's everything to him. The build up throughout the whole year is to the TT. It was mega, you know, he, um, when he first asked me in 2011, you know, I had to think about it for about two seconds and I thought, you know, what's the worst? I'm going to fall off at Jerby, but I've ridden with my hero. But to go to the TTU then was something else. <laughs> Concentration before a race, like I say, it happens to different people at different stages. Um, when I put my helmet on, as soon as the helmet's on, that's it, fully focused. Dave, he changes, you can see him change before any meeting, TT anywhere. He's sort of like, and his face, his face changes and you know he's in the zone then. You don't know to, you know not to ask him stupid questions or what you might think isn't a stupid question, would be a stupid question to him when he's in the zone, like like I was saying to you before. Um, you know, fellas who interview on the start line at the TT, they've, they've got to be there, but they've got a tough job, you know, because, and other people ask you, you know, are you, are you here to win today? Like I said to you before, no, we're, we're here to try our tits off and finish second, you know what I mean? It's Ridiculous questions like that annoy, annoy people. You see everybody going into the zone. If you're not in the zone, you shouldn't be doing it because you're not concentrating properly. When somebody said, oh, you've broke the lap record, it's like, well, you know, Dave, I loved it. I thought it was great. Dave probably, but he would have loved it as well, but he's uh, he wanted to win, as did I. But, you know, you, you went as fast as you did on the day and unfortunately we got beat by seven seconds or something. I mean, and every, it was pretty good to be the first man to average 116, you know, um, obviously seven seconds ahead of the virtuals. But nevertheless, the first first crew to do it, and um, the lap record was—it's a special thing to have. <laughs> when Dave said we're no longer riding together, Dwight was my first port of call. Same characteristics as Molly, actually. 110% committed, you know, nothing will get in the way, obviously. He's mad as well. Imagine coming from Australia to up and leaving with this, him and his missus with a backpack apiece and a sidecar. Yeah. Uh, I had to go to the doctors and do press ups. I had to have a check. No. Because of that, yeah. Yeah. Made me do press ups and sit ups and jump up and down no on one way. leg. Oh, yeah. Whoa. Was that from last night or today? No, from last night. No, I mean that picture. Yeah, no, that's from today. What? It was a shark bite. It went swimming in the sea. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it looks like. <laughs> <laughs> A couple of high-profile racers have not qualified yet, including previous winner Conrad Harrison and, of course, the number one driver, Dave Molyneux. A reminder, then, to qualify, you have to get three laps in during practice week. If you don't, you don't race. So the press is on tonight for Conrad Harrison and Dave Molyneux. Fucking joke, isn't it? Tim, have you got my other boot? They're there, look. The two left, aren't they? Where's the other black boot then? You're a liability fan, you are. Lot of bank where I hit. There's only probably a section of stone wall about that large. The rest is just grass bank, and I caught the stone wall. Ripped a little bit of a hole in the in in the arm on them. I just have to go to the scrutineers now, and make sure they pass a technical inspection. 
obviously the bikes have to be scrutinised just to make sure they're safe. We, Patrick hit his bum on a fucking bale last night, and we've had to, had to have a fucking medical, had to do press ups, oh, everything. Yeah. They go through everything: your, your leathers, your helmets, your boots, your gloves. I know. Oh, fucking, fucking ridiculous. And then they go right through the bike. They check everything. Um, three or four scrutineers go right round it, make sure there's any issues. If they find any problems, I mean, you know, a lot of people moan and bitch about it because. You know, they're a bit finicky, but that's what they're there for. You know, we'd, I would rather they, they found a problem and, and it not, not, not injure us, you know. Fucking Jesus. What can we do with it? Stitch it up. I'll get my mum to stitch. If I, if I want my mum to stitch that up now, then he can he can show you as he walks through. Is that how's that? Quick, we need to get them to my mum and get her to stitch them up. Yeah. Can you? Yeah, and we're I'll doing now. We're doing now. We're doing now. Yeah, no, we're just. No, hold on. Just have a look at it. When I walk down there, you see. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Get that down to my mum and tell her she's got to stitch that up as quick as she can. I'll make sure they're done. Don't worry. I've got another pair of gloves. I'll put them on. Thanks, Tony. Well, that's it, boys. Go on. Yeah, I saw, I saw her looking at Tim's leather and I, she went straight for the arms. So I tried to give her my leathers hiding the arms and I thought, oh, no way I'm going to get away with this. I'm going to be rumbled straight away. Um, and she did it. The first thing she saw was this bloody hole in the leathers. No, wasn't very good. Um, bike was overheating, so it was down on power. It wasn't handling that great. So we've altered the suspension today. Dave's been working like mad, putting a new oil cooler on. Hopefully that'll cure the problem. With the split of Claffy, this is like a test session, really, because we haven't had time to try anything. We've got to lap at a certain speed and you've got to do three laps. We've done one. So we've got to get some laps in. And it is stressful. You know, we have had problems, but we'll overcome them. And uh, as long as we get qualified for Saturday's race, that's all that matters. It would be the discretion of the clerk of the course. With Dave's experience, they might let him ride, but some other riders might complain. It's, we wouldn't know how the bike was going to perform either. We, we've got to qualify. Patrick, where's your leathers? Farrance, where's your leather? Oh, mum's gone. So we're going to make our way down to the sidecar. So let's run through the sidecar leaderboard. Dave Molyneux, Dan Sale, hopefully all those problems ironed out now, 112.4. Not happy though, was he? He, he wasn't, um, but I, I don't think he ever is happy. Uh, <laughs> do you know what? People say Dave can be hard work at times and stuff, but he is so focused on this, what he is about to do. When it, he's in the zone, don't go near him, because we, we it, know, he, he knows what he has to do, yeah. you know, and it, he knows what he wants to do, and he knows what he wants, doesn't he? Absolutely, he's, he's just a perfectionist, and, and why not? Do you know what I mean? Already, we know he can do lap records. Yeah, it'll be a couple of minutes, Tim will be underway here. Dave's got the lid on. Maybe just grab a word of Dan Sale before Dan gets his lid on, actually, before Dave's got his on. Dan, a few problems so far this week. Hopefully, you've got the mind out now. I, I think we've got it sorted now, and just a few little niggly things, you know. Daft yeah. TT things? Oh, you never know, do you? All sorts of bloody things show up, doesn't they? I think the hardest thing, I mean, there's that many burger vans around, you get a little bit of hint of it, you want to pull in, don't you? <laughs> All right, Dan, thanks very much for that. Nice to have a little word. That's what it takes, you know what I mean? I think people have to understand what you're doing when you're out there on, on, on the TT course. You are literally, you've got your neck on the line, you are on the limit everywhere. Uh, so, yeah, it, it, you know, to be focused is so important. And focused on something that he built himself in his shed. That's it's... what he's got to be done. So, number one, Dave Molyneux, Dan Sale, they're about to leave on the DMR A&J Racing. The Honda this year for the guys, and away they go. Stand by, Bray Hill, stand by. 
John Holden reunited with Andy Winkle, of course, they won in 2011. Are they going to recapture that bit of form from that year, I wonder? That's this Holden and Andy's Winkle. Oh, no. <laughs> Stop it. And 2003 winner, Ian Bell racing with his son Carl. This year, they're going quicker than they've ever gone. Well done, Team Bell. brothers Ben and Tom from Mansfield they've got three wins between them tough competition this year though are they gonna get a fourth when I did the first year with them in 2012 I told them how to race I told them all the secrets on the circuit uh, they crashed a few times as well Took them, it took them a while, but they were listening to me. And what they do now is just what I told them. It's exactly what I told them. I went out with him. I said, Pat Patrick and Tim, we go out in the car, and I, I, I will tell you a few secrets around here. I'd have said we were pretty good at. 92, 3% of the track is just probably 6 or 7% of it where we just have to sharpen it up. The thing is, we know where that is as well, don't we? So you've got like kind of corners where Molly excels because he just he doesn't roll off. No. Here? Yeah. Yeah, you should know. Because Molly's dead close to the sidecar wheel's always dead close to that wall that juts out every time. Is it? Yeah, just let it punch right out. Yeah, it's all little bits like that that add up, isn't it? This is, this is Patrick's favourite corner class from the other night. Why? Least, you know, for that big scar he's got on his back. Oh, that that was where yeah, it was here. Oh, was here. 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 Yeah. And this is where he laid this is where he fell off and laid on the floor crying like a girl. <laughs> Just there on the left. It's only because it was a nice nurse stood there, that's why he wanted to stop there. Oh my back, my back. Please help me. Tim Patrick for answer up next to the ball. Oh, smell of burning rubber in the air. <laughs> yeah, thanks, Chris. I think I can hear engine noises in the distance. I do. It's the first machine on the road. Molyneux comes up quickest on the time in sheet so far, but uh, we think Tim Reeves might be a little bit neater. And, uh, it is Reeves the quickest, uh, Molyneux two seconds back. If you like this tonight, will you? <laughs> <laughs> well, certainly qualifying becomes at the end of the week the main concern. So Dave Molyneux, of course, desperately does back need the match. Uh, he'll just be looking, I think, to get a full. Okay, obviously, he's had a little bit of bad luck at some gremlins this week already. Tim Reeves won't be letting him go and probably wanting to learn a little bit, I would think. Certainly the character of Tim Reeves. Tim Reeves and Dave Molyneux. This John Holden, Andy Winkle. And next to there, Ian Bell, Carl Bell, Ben Birchall, Tom Birchall. Well, it is uh, Reeves and Molyneux at the top of the heap. Here's Molly. Very, very quickly. 454 his sector time. Molly's improved, but only by a second or so with a 459. So Tim Reeves and Pat Barrett really on one tonight. Reeves, Reeves will be squeezing the head of the going like Go straight through. Dave Molyneux, this That's his first couple up. Yeah. Wait and see for the times to appear, but uh, I'm sure Molly will be much, much happier with, uh, with that lap time uh, than his results from earlier in the week. But uh, right on his tail is Tim Reeves. Reeves is caught, though. Eh? Reeves is caught. Yeah. Uh, Reeves has gone quicker, as has Molyneux. And that is actually Tim Reeves' quickest ever lap. So well done to Tim Reeves. I know it's only in practice, but it's his quickest ever lap. Oh, ever lap. 135.8 is Dave Molyneux down sale. 131.8 is Tim Reeves. Yeah, 114.8. That's Dave, 114.738.
not a lot, is it? No. They're only a second faster than the first lap. Yeah. All right, how's it going? Yeah, good. Yeah, he's got two laps and he's qualified now. <laughs> Reeves is quicker, though. That's not all right. No. Yeah, it's under geared. Yeah, under geared with the foot. Yeah. I said that, didn't yeah, I? Yeah, you were saying it. As soon as I seen the fucking speed lap time, I seen Reeves catch us, that bike's under geared. Yeah. It must have been quite fun out there, though. I seen Reeves that. Is, is he hard? Hey? Eh? Is he hard? He's fucking all over the show. <laughs> so mind you, we went up the inside of him, Ramsey. Yeah. And outraged yeah, I outraged past him. I was up on top of his shoulders. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, fuck, we're not going to make this. So now I just fine tune him. Yeah. One more. 141, nearly 142 at the speed trap. They were 146. Yeah. That's the under gear, isn't it? Yeah, it's just under gear. Yeah. It's just yeah. creeping down. You know, he's smashed into the back of him. Oh, Jesus Christ. You twice. passed him somewhere. Ramsey, mm. I just thought, he's in my way. Fucking hell, what a nuisance. I got past him. <laughs> but his bike was just fast. You dragged so. him up the mountain, I know. You thought, <clears throat> don't, let, don't be showing him. Don't, yeah, I know what yeah, you're yeah, saying. Don't be showing him. him. Yeah. I knew exactly what you're at. I thought, as soon as you pinched me, I thought, oh. Yeah, well, you're going to tone him along. Yeah. Waste yeah. of fucking time. Yeah. He got us run up the mountain. Yeah. He'd be like this tonight, but wait, oh, wait yeah. till we get that gear right. Fantastic. Right? Yeah, Should be right. right. He's, going to do a he's, got, he's got two obstacles in his way anyway. Yeah. yeah. We're up now. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. You did an amazing job. Amber. Flies, bad? It's not bad for me. No. I was all right. Handling good? Yeah, it's just a little bit skittery still. Just needs that sorted out. Right. And to get that sorted out, get the gear and sorted out, we're there. Yeah. What about Daniel Molly did? When Molly came in, Danny like... Did he? Yeah. Uh, Bellines is okay? Yeah, seems to be okay. Yeah, yeah I, was, full, I, was, full... I was thinking that going down the mountain. Yeah. I was thinking it was handling okay even with the, with the full tank, like through the lefts. Yeah. Through the 30, second, 33rd, it was still good. Okay. So I would still come out in the middle of the road. Yeah. That's it, practice week done. Soon goes, doesn't it? <coughs> what a week we've had for qualifying and practice. It's time to go racing. Especially around here. If you don't get nervous, I think you can get too complacent. It just keeps your respect for the place and keeps you keeps you trying to do your best. You know, nerves are good, I reckon. Yeah, they keep you on your toes. Yeah, there's there is a lot of pressure. All the crowds start coming, there's a lot of people about. And yeah, it's sort of it, it's, it's it's the first big day if you like. You're not racing against other people, you're racing against the clock. So you're just doing exactly the same as what you're doing in practice, except for there's a there's a trophy at the end of it, hopefully. Yeah, it's not, not been an ideal start, really. You know, we've failed technical inspection. They've uh, found a very small crack, so uh, we've got to just shoot down there with a the bike to, to Greg Lambert down at GLR Sidecars. He's going to weld it up for us, and, uh, yeah, we'll all be good and go through again. I said well done to the screw news, because the chain could, chain could have come... It would have loosened the chain and then could have come off or something. Should we drop, drop the thing there? There's no sign of Dave Molyneux yet, but that is not unusual for him at all. He often just turns up an hour before the race and just goes straight through to the front because he does like to avoid the crowds. Thanks very much. Cheers. All good. Take the rest out as well, Mark. Right, I'll cheer. Uh, no, we need a 10 mil, yeah, 10 mil socket and, and ratchet to do the battery up. Does it? Uh, we might need an 8 mil Allen key as well then. Oh, look out. What a word. Don't go in the shit. Keep going. Do you want to get 
Push. Oh. It's all steep than what you think when you've got to push a bike up, isn't it? Attention paddock, attention paddock. This is a final call for all remaining sidecars to report to technical inspection. That's all remaining sidecars to technical inspection. Control it. You got it, Paddy. You got it, Paddy, what do you want? Look at, here. Yeah, I'll put, do you want me to push it, Paddy? Or... Good afternoon once again to Tim Glover. Thank you very much indeed. Yes, we're half an hour away from the start of the first Shaw sidecar race and dramatic news already to bring you because there is no Dave Molyneux and Dan Sale. Dave Molyneux will not be racing here this afternoon. Uh, Klaus, we're just hearing that um, unfortunately Dave Molyneux won't be starting the race. You know, the boys going out and want to race against the best and uh, Molyneux, he's one of the best. Can you imagine He's racing for us and just yeah, yeah. don't turn up here. Yeah. I would be in shit with you Honda. You wouldn't be happy, would you? No. Yeah, yeah, sponsors, yeah. money in and yeah. all sorts. Yeah. Well, to be fair, Tim, uh, Dave and Dan have struggled a little bit in qualifying all week. Yeah, there was the, the split with Claffy just a couple of weeks before, and that's always going to put a lot of pressure on him engine-wise. No, because if he's not com competitive, yeah, oh, I... he's not doing it. No, oh no. To see its engine failures a lot of the time, you know, maybe he is pushing it to the limits, and the problem is maybe the engines can't handle his limits. Fucking Reeves was holding me up, and I thought, no, and he was saying the same. He said, You started dead legs ahead of him, yeah, and you and he passed you on the yeah. road. How the hell was he holding you up? <laughs> Could be something as fundamental as brakes or like that, or a fluid that's not going quite right, all of a sudden. Drama indeed, and certainly it must be something uh, quite, uh, that they can't fix overnight. It's not a case of switching it on and switching it back on again with all this modern technology that they have. Maybe he's thinking, you know, just concentrate on getting everything right so that when it comes to the next race, he's got a chance of being out there and doing what he's got to do. He's a different league. He's got that history behind him, all those wins. You know what you do here, these things where it's only, he only breaks 12 times. People make, I'm not saying make things up, but you know, they, they give them the, um, the superhero status, if you like, you know. Um, but given that, I have to say, listening to the other riders coming past us and listening to Molly come past us, it wouldn't surprise me if he does only break 12, 14 times or whatever, you know. Um, it's, it's, it's just different with him when he comes past you, you know? But it's his decision and uh, makes it easier for the other. Fair enough. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Turn your, turn your lock. Turn the lock the other way, tell him. Absolutely distraught. It was just numb. Everybody was gutted. Uh, the engine builders in tears. I've never seen Dave so distraught. Dan's upset. Whole team's gutted. I've just come to Douglas now to get parts, and we're going back to Dave's workshop. We've just got to regroup. We're going to put a new wire and loom on this afternoon. Listen to the race. That's all we can do. We think it's something to do with the wire and loom. We're not 100% until we get the bike stripped this afternoon, but it's, it's, it's an electrical fault. Dave made the decision because if it cut out on the track, the sport's dangerous enough. He could have an accident and cause an accident for another competitor, and it's just not worth the risk. Just not worth it. The bike's unrideable. Fingers crossed we'll be back on Friday and we'll be guns blazing. There's been a few tears shed, I can tell you that.
it's weird. You, 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 know, you, you get yourself ready, you go up onto the line. It's, it's, it's a real horrible feeling. It's like you're saying goodbye to everyone. It's, uh... You know, you line up and it, it's the worst, it's the worst bit of the whole TT. As soon as you, the, the worst bit is from when you arrive in Park Ferme to go to the line and then when you're on the line. We all happy. All the people around you that, that have been with you all week and your family and your friends and your kids and and you that that them five, six minutes before you get pushed through the, the barrier where you, you know it's a minute to go, it's 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 hell really. You you, you could uh, yeah, it's like it is literally the, the the way to explain it, it's like you're saying goodbye to everyone and you're like you're not coming back. Unfortunately it does happen sometimes and uh, we've been lucky enough it's not happened to us and hopefully it it won't happen in the future. Conditions are absolutely perfect. All eyes on Ben and Tom Birchall, of course, no Dave Molyneux. John Holden and Andrew Winkle, Tim Rees and Patrick Ferrance, Ian and Carl Bell. In third place, Tim Rees, he's just half a second down on the virtuals. Goodness, that's close. Next machine in, that's Ian and Carl Bell. That's Carl Bennett and Lee Kane, your number 12 outfit of Matt Dixon, Sean Parker. 26 safely through, the Dwight Beer and Ben Finns. Let's go to Ramsey. Roy Moore, John Holden and Andy Winkle lead here at Ramsey by six seconds over the Birchall brothers. Now, what is the difference between Tim Reeves and Patrick Ferenc? Because they're here now. And they've dropped to eight seconds behind Tom and Ben Birchall. No, he's dropping right back. He's eight seconds behind Birchall Bit of a misfire on that one, I feel, as it goes away from Ramsey hairpin. Misfire. Holding on to third place, though. Yeah, Tim Ford. Not 20 seconds beyond Ben and Tom, though. Yeah, that's not uh, so He's got definite issues. It's not revving out. I think it's getting to a certain rev range and then just kind of misfiring. So he's dropped down to 39 seconds now behind Holden and Winkle. And that is an indication that all is not well with that, but he'll be trying to nurse it round. Red. It's red. Well, it, it, is the red flag out? Definitely. Or... He stood there with it on, on the track. Well, with the red flag? It, yeah, with the red flag. Okay. So, it's yeah. full course red. Yeah, we've got a, we have got an incident, we're being told, at Wren Cullen.
an incident at Crash Redfall. Well, they've gone through there, haven't they? Yeah, they're in bungalows. Yeah. We get it. There's a red flag. Certainly, this race here is going to be stopped. Twice, though. No, it didn't, yeah. did it? Fuck it. What, you need to try and push it on? What's what, what happened? Going red flag. Red colour. Yeah, red colour. It's got no go at all. We're watching you. You're just going backwards. Take, take the fairing off. Where's, where's the box? Who's got the box? Grab tides. Grab, grab, grab a screwdriver at the box. That's right. It's not as good as the other engine as the other engine. It's not as good as the other engine. It's not as good as the other engine. It's not as good as the other engine. Keep calm, keep you calm. We have a red flag going out here at Ramsey, but uh, we've been kind of a part of that decision one time before when the member Guy Martin, I think the race was on, and they definitely got an instruction for the red flag to go out here at Ramsey. You download it, sir. What's the number like? Yeah. When I was driving, when I was riding it, yeah. I settled from here. Yeah. When I got to. Like, where did it go? I felt it go. It, 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 it was pulling strong, and it was pulling strong until I got to Greaver Bridge. Yeah. Once I came out of Greaver Bridge, it started to go, and it, and it just like dropped off. I thought, I thought it was going to seize up. I thought, you know what I mean? It, it, yeah. it lost a load of power, yeah. Just went on, it went right off. Cars you put on it. Yeah, brand new. No, yeah, you know that year me and Dave broke down? I heard it coming down out of the mountain, I heard it just start, and I could hear it every time, and then we stopped it. At that first moment in time, you, you're just looking for a way through the debris field. And um, you just know, you know, that's one of the lads. We rolled through. And then you're, and you're, you're riding along and you're thinking, a couple of yellow flags, and they're okay. If we see a green flag, then we're okay. But then it was yellow after yellow after yellow, and it was blatantly obvious then. And that was just, somebody's been really hurt. So we all came back to the paddock. Um, and again, the atmosphere is just, We're a very small collective of riders, so we all know each other. Um, so when something as bad as that happens, it's, it's heavy. Dwight knew what it was all about. Uh, him foremost, I mean, he moved completely and moved here for his dream. And he fulfilled his dream as well. And uh, we all go out there every day and just hope that that doesn't happen to us. Spins is okay. Because it's really hard, you don't know what to say. So I just dropped him a message saying, didn't know what to say, but hope everything's all right, get well soon. It's very heavy, and it is hard. But you get over it, because we all know it's there, it's part of the sport.
that's a full restart of the Shaw Sidecar Race 1 coming up. We could hear the bike was misfiring, but finding a problem like this takes time. Obviously a restart and a uh, new ball game, et cetera, et cetera, for these sidecar crews. But again, just back to the point we had right at the start of this, uh, we have no Dave Molyneux. So a real opportunity for some of the other crews challenging for the podium. Certainly it must be difficult for the boys to get back on the start line again. Helicopter overhead can only mean one thing. There's action fast approaching. It is number two, the virtuals and the gearbox. Little bit of a slide at the back end, but he puts the power on, straightens up away from that, and he is safely through on his opening lap. Next machine interview, that is the number three outfit of uh, John Holden and Andy Winkle, and the virtuals have got the drop on him on the opening lap. Only by a second, but the virtuals take it. But this is a very fast approach from Jim Reeves. Tim Reeves visibly quick on the way in, but not smooth enough to make an impression on the leaderboard. It's still the virtual setting down the quickest time. Tim Reeves and Patrick Ferrance, they sound well, they look well. Here's Ian and Carl Bell now getting through. Ben and Tom Virgil. Uh, 23 seconds cover the top four at the grandstand. Let's see if anybody's been able to make any changes in the nine or so mile run out to here. Here are the virtuals now, very quick indeed, and looking more determined this time than they were on the first lap of the original start. Reeves and Ferrance are here with us now, but as they start the mountain climb, you can still detect that misfire in the outfit. Tim Reeves is shaking his head. Whatever his problem was, it's not been fixed in time for the restart. A retirement for Ian and Carl Bell, which promotes Tim Reeves back up to third place. Bit of a misfire on that one, I feel, as it goes away from Ramsey Hairpin. And we did notice that the bells did not go through uh, the lap bridge. I can hear them, I can see the helicopter, here they go. And the new fastest sidecar team around the TT course, Ben and Tom Birchall. A new lap record, 116.798, taking the record away from Dave Molyneux. It's not been his day today. So the three pre-race favourites are running away from the rest of the field. But have uh, Reeves and Ferrance got a problem? Across the line, let's listen. Oh, it sounds rough, that. It sounds like that's misfiring there. Colin uh, Buckley and Robbie Shorter stopped at the pits at the uh, Carl Cox Motorsport outfit. Here with the race leaders, and it's a 10 second advantage. The Birchills have retired at the Solby Crossroads. Now it's John Holt and Andy Winkle now, who probably will have seen the virtual stationary by the side of the road. Dramatic last lap here in the sidecar, or restarted sidecar race. What is it going to be? Number four, Tim Reeves and Pat Ferrance, they're still hanging in there. The bike doesn't sound well, but it's still hanging on to third place. John Holden and Andrew Winkle making that mountain climb. Tim Reeves and Patrick Ferrance are overdue here now at Ramsey Hairpin. Glenn 
Duff, uh, we've just been informed that Tim Reeves and Patrick Ferrance have retired at Glen Duff. That is the, the long straight going down from out uh, on the western side. There's number eight. Yeah, when you when you park up at the side of the road, anywhere around the circuit round here, it's just it's a, it's a massive deflation. So it wasn't it wasn't a great feeling. I mean, I was surprised we kept on getting uh, pit boards all the way around. We knew we weren't going to win from sort of like halfway around the first lap because it was just getting progressively worse. Um, but no, I was I was surprised we kept on getting pit boards saying P3, 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 and it's just like I couldn't understand how we were still in P3 because it was. The, the misfire was really quite bad, and um, yeah, so it wasn't it wasn't a great feeling for the race because practice had gone really well. We were second fastest overall after practice, and we were really quite confident. But it's just it's just one of them things. It was just a, a broken earth terminal on the on the quick shifter, and that was it. That was enough to to put you out of the race at the, at the end. It just just unfortunate. It's it's the the nature of the TT. You can prepare as much as you want before, but nothing ever ever prepares you for the actual TT no matter how much testing you do how much preparation you can do um, you could only prepare so much and you could think everything's perfect and then this place will throw something completely different at you that's never happened before um, so yeah just one of them things unfortunately but that's a TT well, I don't think you'd ever get comfortable being around here because there's actually a lot more bumps this year. I think all the riders and uh, drivers will tell you that uh, it's it's getting really hard on the machines. You know, yeah. there's been a lot of DNFs exactly and right. uh, uh, there's been uh, a few crashes, as you may know. It's not the fact that we're not trying, but this is what's going on out there. It just seems to be a little bit harder this year, uh, especially on rider and machine. But it's for, it's the same for everybody. Yeah, right. So you know, whoever's getting through and, and getting on the podiums are, are doing really well. You know, it's, it's been phenomenal. To and look at that fist pump from Mr. Winkle there in the outfit. He knew they'd got the victory. John Holden and Andy Winkle take it. Chase it, chase it, chase it. 2011, they won TT number one. Five years later comes win number two. And they are going to thoroughly enjoy that. Yeah, John was a little bit nervous for the start of this. It's win number two at the TT for John Holden and Andy Winkle. Fantastic. Just a reminder that we do have a 30-minute delay if you're just tuning in. A 30-minute delay. We do have these misty conditions, particularly out to the west side of the island. It does appear that another delay is on its way. Things get delayed. It's like an hour delay, an hour delay. Um, obviously, it gets a bit more tense because you, you don't know when you're going to be going out. You know, you could get yourself ready and then the weather could change and it's off again and then it's on again and then, right, the race is at 6 o'clock and... That happens many a time, so your emotions are up, can be up and down all day. What goes through your mind? I mean, you must be building yourself up to get ready to go, then all of a sudden it's a half hour delay, another half hour delay. What on earth do you do? What are you doing, Pat? Can't find it now. Pretty grim, though. What are you looking for? Where are the book? Yeah, there was a picture, somebody put a picture on Twitter of the, of the weather. On the mountain. It's going to go late because it's rain tomorrow. Yes, yeah, there you go. Rain all weekend. That's the weather at the minute. Up on the mountain. Yeah, right, isn't it? Perhaps you can come and write a Facebook link for it. <laughs> My whole timeline is for that of Patrick Barron taking selfies. <laughs> <laughs> 
I feel the timing. He's officially become a belly. <laughs> There's another one. John McGuinness so succinctly put it, I think, we're waiting for the island to be ready for us. We'll have to keep it quiet because Dave's having a little nap in the van. Dave and Dan went straight to the dyno because the bike wasn't performing in the practice session. It got worse for Benetton, didn't it? Oh, it got a little bit better around midnight sort of time and I thought we had a bit of bit of headway with it and then it just went from one to worse and worse and worse. And I think by about five o'clock, it was pretty much dead, wasn't it? There was, there was no coming back. I went down at eight o'clock with Dave and Dave Hagen, and we completely stripped everything again and rebuilt it, and it, it just wouldn't rev. And we had to make the decision then to, we rang Dan and said, stay in bed. <laughs> it was the cutting out issue, wasn't it, towards the end? It was too dangerous. If that would have cut out on track and somebody could have hit them, they could have been killed. You know, up there, man, the, another outfit. It's just too dangerous to race. We were all upset, disappointed, but we ended up back at Dave's workshop listening to the race on the radio, stripping the bike, didn't we? A bit quiet in there, wasn't it? A bit quiet, <laughs> but we got on with it, didn't we? Yeah. We had to. One of the TT worst TTs was. ever. We were a little bit in the back foot with splitting the clappy, you know, we had to get our own engine sorted out. And engine builders been working flat out, trying to tune them, and we've had to source bits everywhere. It's been a nightmare, really, isn't it? I think that put the most stress on, didn't it? The most workload on. Yeah. The fact that we only had one standard engine. Yeah. We need four. Stripped to the bare, nothing left of it, completely rewired. It's, it's got new clocks, new, new clocks, loom. New clocks, new loom, everything you can think of has had done to it. The engine's already done two laps of practice, so yeah. we just hope it'll last another three, so. We've run out of time, we've, we've got to go with what we got. The way the bike is not quite how Dave and Dan wants it, they're just going to have to go hard. They're as hungry as each other and they want to prove that, you know, they still are or the better, better pairing out there. So, yeah, it's going to be a tight race, I think. If all goes well, they'll be, they'll be pushing hard. You know, the fog doesn't worry you anyway. You know where you're going. Yeah. <laughs> it's only for all them foreigners, isn't it? They don't know where they're going. <laughs> they use the helicopters as an excuse, don't they? But it's only so Tim Reeves knows where he's going, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> Well, the fog has finally cleared, so let's get ready to race. After a disastrous TT by his standards, 17-time winner and all-time sidecar legend Dave Molyneux is looking for another win today. Some say he will be out for revenge. And it's the man that everyone's been talking about this week. Molyneux knows the track better than anybody around here, but how will he get on today? more than capable of pushing and taking a new lap record. That distinctive and self-designed red outfit will once again have clear roads ahead of him. Well, it's kind of an unwritten rule here when Molly's in the outfit, do not disturb. 17-time winner, Dave Molyneux, the most in history. Eight-time TT winner, Dan Sale. I bet you wish sometimes Dave wasn't running when you were racing here anyway. Uh, probably, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm about to come and get me some Hot as a smoking gun So get ready, cause here I come What you gonna do? I'm gonna rock you What you gonna do? I'm gonna rock you What you gonna do? I'm gonna rock you I have you begging for mercy, begging for mercy
flag drops, Volley and Dan, lap record holders Ben and Tom Birchill. Race one winners underway now. And Tim Reeves and Patrick Grant. Quickest off the start line. Now here, bike engines, here's the first man on the road, it's Dave Molyneux. Molyneux and Sale lead Holden and Winkle, Virchel's a third, Reeves and Farron's fourth, the Bell's fifth. <laughs> Molyneux and Sale now at Balaf Bridge, nothing between uh, Dave Molyneux and John Holden. So at Balaf Bridge, Holden has managed to take the lead from Dave Molyneux. Ten for the second difference between Adam and John Holden by a tenth of a second. Well, I can assure you that the passenger working hard to keep that back wheel down as they go left, right, left, right, and fuse. But the news from the bungalows, following him himself, and only by one and a half seconds from the virtuals, with John Holden and Andy Winkle just a fraction of a second down in third. What a race we're having here. out of uh, Governors and on to Glen Crutchy Road are the leaders, or are they? It's that tight. It's going to have to call it when they look at the screens. Dave Molyneux and Dan Sale will be coming into view. We can see the television helicopter hovering, and here they are, crossing the line now. It's Molyneux and Sale who lead, but it is a slim, slim margin with the Virtuals screaming along. Something red comes towards me at high speed. It's Dave Molyneux. The Virtuals go through. They hold the lead here. Their statement of intent from those two right from the very start. What a race. So what will it be now? Number 35, I think, is the second of these machines in the view, but there's three of them absolutely together. Nine, 35 and eight, oh dear. He didn't half give him a shove up the back. It's a retirement, 35. That retirement might be medical more than technical, I would suggest. Yes, obviously putting the hammer down, and you would bet on Dave Molyneux to do that. The Birchills are on the move. And here they are at Ramsey Hairpin, and it's his number one. They are in view. They will be in view. And it's Holden Winkle who should be here next, and they appear to be dropping time, but the engine's still revving well. So that is where it all starts to get tense. Two teams here, and that is Dave Molyneux and Dan Sale safely through, but just they cross the line out of the corner of my eye, I can see the Birchills. I think we're going to see something a little bit quicker as Tim Reeves and Patrick Ferrantz flash by in front of us. They're both here, the Birchills and Molyneux and Sale. And the Birchills have taken the lead from Dave Molyneux. Uh, leader on the road should be Dave Molyneux, but he was being chased down hard by the Birchalls. It's not Dave Molyneux, it is the Birchalls. The Birchalls lead on the road, a disaster maybe for Molly. And uh, not a good sign to see him missing here and being plagued with mechanical problems all week. Hey, you've done well to hold that.
the virtuals now are out on their own. Uh, so Dave Molyneux not made it through to Glen Helen on his final lap, and uh, everybody is going to shuffle up a place. Tim Reeves, Patrick Ferrand safely through here on their final lap. So he's made a second up on the run. On the final lap, the virtuals lead John Holden and Andy Winkle. I can hear some engine noise. Tim Reeves and Pat Barrens are there in third place. Fourth place for Carl Bennett and Lee Kane. They are one minute and seven seconds down on Reeves and Ferrand, which shows you the pace at the top of the race. race. Lee John Holden and Tim Reeves and Pat Barrens are there. They'll need to start thinking about machine conservation now to try and nurse that bike around. It can only be Ben and Tom Virtual, I would think, coming towards us here now, outfit number two, and probably fully aware that they've extended lead now. It was boiling up into a bit of a battle there, but now extended lead by Tom and Ben Virtual. On to Glen Crutchley Road should be our winning sidecar crew. Checkered flag is out, I can hear the machine coming into view, and yet a claim as they cross the line, Ben and Tom Virtual are fourth. TT victory for the Mansfield duo. A warm applause rings out from the grandstand. Yeah, just crossing the line right now. That is Reeves and Ferrance in third. 18.4 down on Holden and Winkle. Such a disappointment last Saturday, but they have the lap record and their fourth TT win. Thank you. Sorry about that, that's Reeves you coming in, just, just spoiling your moment there. Congratulations. Yeah. Well done, mate. I've, I've got a big star under my leg. I'm not making excuses, but that's it. You're right, mate. Well done, mate. Well done. Well done. Still the fastest on through the uh, speed trap. We were? Yeah, yeah, all three laps passed it through the speed trap. Well, yeah, so much. And the winners of the Shaw Sidecar Race 2, fourth time on the top step, Ben and Tom Virgil. Gets out the side door, just making sure you put the lights off, and the battery goes flat. All right. All right. All right. Good. Dan just told you. Yeah. He's down back yet? Yeah. Yeah. He's all right. Hey? He's all right. I've been talking to him. Yeah. Listen. Oh. Get him one piece. Oh yeah. That's it. Sandwich. <laughs> some in the fridge. Starving. Yeah. Top man. Nice. We, were, we were up against it. We've been up against it all fortnight from six yeah. weeks ago. We were up against it. But we're back on track for next year. Definitely. We'll go for it. Yeah. It. What else can you do? I, I tell you what, your best was brilliant. Just the bike wasn't up for it. Simple as that. Um. Very disappointed, um, emotional. It's been a, a poor TT, TT week for us. Uh, it didn't start too good with me. Father unfortunately died on the, the Monday morning of practice week. We split with Claffy a few weeks before uh, practice week, so it's just been on the back foot. And, but we'll be back. We'll be back fighting next year. Try and win two races. That's what we'll be aiming for. And we won't leave a stone unturned. We'll be, me and Dave are both in our 50s, but we're motivated and we'll be going for it. He's took it well. You know, we've, we have had issues with the bike, not handling great, overheating problems, but in all fairness, he's persevered. He's been a model, he's been really good, and he's took it on the chin, and we've just got to accept it and get on with it, and we'll come back fighting. Mayo! Please! Hey! Mayo! Let's go straight to Tim. 
And Patrick is our third place crew, and Tim, that at least makes up a little bit for Saturday. Yeah, for sure. You know, <clears throat> we had quite a disastrous week again, like we seem to have the last couple of years. But yeah, I'm happy to be in this room, and uh, massive congratulations to Bell and Tom and to John and Andy. They did a great job, and uh, yeah, we've got to find a bit to run at that pace. But I think we know where we're missing it, and. Um, yeah, we'll have to make some plans as soon as we leave here and get ready to come back for next year. You're used to running out front running pace, so you know what it takes to be there. Can you identify easily what you need to do? Yeah, yeah, we know what's, we know what's missing. And, um, yeah, I don't want to say too much, but we'll, we'll address it. And, uh, yeah, we'll come back stronger, I'm sure. And uh, But, yeah, Patrick did a fantastic job. Massive thanks to Klaus and all of his team. And all of my family and friends have arrived. And, uh, yeah, give us a bit of a boost. It was just, you know, to be in here is just what we needed, really, to finish off the TT for us. And in the race today, were there any issues at all? Uh, yeah, no, it was all good. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get it from Patrick's side then. Was it uh, all good from your side? Yeah, no, it was perfect. Um, just we know where we need to find the. We just started lacking that 10, 10 12, 13 seconds a lap um, just to keep with, with John and Ben and Dave. Um, but we know between ourselves where, where we need to find that. And uh, yeah, we'll just as soon as we get away from here, we'll, we'll start making plans um, to, to start to work towards that for next year. Um, but I'd just like to dedicate this podium to Dwight Bear. He was a good friend of ours. Yeah, sadly lost his life in the first race, so think of you, buddy. Obviously, I'll never forget, but I think about him every day. It was just a tribute more than anything, and a bit of an honour thing. His ambition was to win a TT and be British champion. And he wanted to come here because he said to be the best, you've got to beat the best. So that was his attitude. And he, he, got, he got stuck in from the word go. At, at the crash scene, I landed at the side of the road and um, I was sort of like facing towards the other way and I thought, you know, my knees a bit sore. And I turned around to look at it, and when my foot was sort of up by my ribs, I thought, you know, we're in a bit of bother here. And then I went to the went to the hospital, and um, they said, you know, it's going to be possible amputation. And I said, you're not cutting it off. Shattered tibia, plateau, the top end. Basically, they said there was more breaks than they could count. Um, scar up there from there to there, and on the inside from there to there. And there's one, you can't see it now, it's, it's gone away quite well, actually. And um, there's a plate that comes up here and wraps around the top of the tibia, and there's one that goes up the inside here and wraps around there, and a load of screws in each side holding it all together. I mean, you can, still, you can see the metal stick out there, you can actually feel it underneath. You know, sometimes in racing, accidents do happen, and um, you know what you do when you set off, do you know what I mean? It's, it's like signing up for the army, then complain you got shot. You, you know, you, you don't feel any different about it. You just want to get as fit as you can, as quick as you can, and get back out there. Yeah, the week we've had, and the, the last minute deal with Klaus, you know, it wasn't ideal, and uh, I, I hate losing. Well, I'm really, and, uh, we need to uh, address, address the problems, we know what's wrong. Yeah, it'll all be good. Good, we did it. All we wanted to be on the podium, and that's what we achieved. Um, I mean, it was just four weeks ago when we teamed up, and I'm, I'm more than happy at the moment. Even now, I always said uh, we want to be on the top of the podium, but this is the first time I say it. it's good what we achieved. What we need, we need a new chassis for 2017. Uh, I think Tim lost a bit the confidence, trusting on the chassis, but we made the maximum out of what we, we had, and that's good enough. I think he will be the future winner.
So my dream when I was a kid was to be a sidecar passenger, but after watching that, I think I'll leave it to the professionals. Heading back to two-wheel action tomorrow, here's what's coming up. TT Locking Live is back with Steve Plater and myself, and we'll be joined by Cameron Donald and Clive Paget. It's race day number two in the virtual TT powered by Motul, and we reminisce over one of the closest races in the history of the TT. So make sure you join us tomorrow for more action from the TT Lock-In fueled by Monster Energy.